Welcome to Creative Pages with Catherine. I'm Catherine. Today I am going on another road trip with Teresa from Our Green Acres and Kay and Trish from the Crafting Cousins YouTube channels. You can find links to their channels in the description box below. And I really would like to thank them for hosting the road trip once again here in September. I am so excited to be working with our back to school designer paper pack. I have a piece of wax paper on my table because I am going to be working with varnish again and I don't want to get varnish on my table. So I've taken a little electrical tape and put it to keep my wax paper down. My item that I'm working with today is an infant formula container and I'm going to turn this into a fun pencil or office supply box and we are gonna see how it turns out. I think this is gonna be a really fun project for me to work on. But first I'm going to take one of my knives and I'm gonna work off this sticker up here because I can't get my paper to attach if I have these stickers stuck to the formula thing. So I just grabbed one of my handy dandy knives. I think I've told you all in the past that yes, I am a chef. I'm used to working with knives. So I won't always be working with the exact knives that other crafters work with. It is what it is. And I'm also gonna see if I can remove this purple label. If I can't, I'll just leave it on, but I will be back with you all shortly and you can see my progress. Here I am back again with the infant formula container. I was able to get off most of the purple label. And I had to use a little bit of goo gone to get the last of the sticky stuff from that label off. I got most of it. I don't think I quite got it all the way, but I'm okay with that. It is what it is. I got so excited to get my project started, I forgot to tell you all where I got my infant formula bin. My sweet friend Donna brought it to one of my crops and gave it to me. I think she likes to challenge me to see what I can come up with <laughs> with some of these things. I do have another item she's given me that will probably be on the November road trip and that one should be a fun one. But for now we're going to be working with this one. And so I also need to let you all know that you are currently visiting New Mexico on your road trip. I am near Las Cruces and southern part of New Mexico and I hope you enjoy your stop here seeing how I transform this infant formula container into a fun pencil box. I did take my sandpaper block and scuff up the container just a little bit after I got the purple label off. I didn't want it to be completely smooth to put everyone's favorite Mod Podge on with the sheet I picked out from our back to school paper pack is this one. I just thought this was would be too cute to use for something that was gonna hold pencils because it does have pencils and erasers and crayons and different things on it. And I cut this sheet four and three quarters by 12 inches. So this is a four and three quarter by 12 inch strip. I'm gonna wrap around the front and it wasn't quite long enough to reach the back. So we're gonna have a four and three quarter by four and three quarter strip to meet the 12 inch strip. Um, just need as well. Okay, and that'll line up just almost exactly right. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and put this back piece on first. And then I will put my front piece on that's gonna wrap around. I also have a sheet of our music note paper that I've cut using our custom cutting system oval. I used our second largest oval and our red blade around the outside to cut this oval because honestly, when I looked at our template that tells us how to cut things, this one fits, pops right in and I am just as happy to have a little bit of the gold showing. It actually goes really well with the paper we're using to coat the bottom part of the container. 
and you'll see how I'm gonna wind up decorating this later, but first things first, we are going to get our Mod Podge going, and I'm gonna attach the piece to the top here and the piece to the side, and I will let it dry, come back to you all, and let you know what I'm gonna be doing from here. Oops. Let's give it a little bit of a start first. I mean, I think you all probably know by now how to work with the Mod Podge. You just brush it on, put your piece down, and then put a, another coat on top. Just try to get an even layer when you're going around. But honestly, you don't need to watch me do this for an entire video. So I'm just popping this on. You can see it's not gonna actually um, be flat into the bottom of this lid, but I think we'll be, it'll, it's gonna still stay and I think it's gonna be okay once it's dry. So this one is the trickier piece because of the indentures in the lid. And here we go. Okay, so I guess I lied. You all are gonna watch me do at least the lid. And I'm just gonna do some nice even strokes as best as I can. And I'm gonna set that one aside to dry. This one, I'm gonna go ahead and pop on the back piece first. Go ahead and I'm gonna coat it the same way I did the lid. And I will be back with you and probably after a few hours. I'm hoping this is gonna dry clear, which it should since it's Mod Podge. And you can see what my next steps are gonna be. My box is now dried. It does have a couple of small wrinkles in it, but I'm really not too super worried about that. My top has a nice little glossy finish to it, and so does the front of the box. And it looks just like a regular container now. You wouldn't even know that it was a formula container if you didn't know that I hadn't told you. And I've pulled out a couple of embellishments. This is my embellishment that inspired this entire piece. I just thought that these lockers were really cool. I loved the foil detail on them and they are gonna go front and center on my box here. I thought about kind of trying to cut papers to work out to make my own lockers on here. And then I thought, you know what, why not just go ahead and attach the actual embellishment. I have pulled out a also another one of our foiled embellishments for art that I might put on the top. Just if I decide to put some supplies or it might wind up to the side, we'll see. And then I pulled out some art enameled embellishments as well because I thought it was fun that it had the stars, it has some crayons and pencils as well. And we'll see what I wind up pulling in. But first, I also have my ABC handwriting stencil that just came out. And I also pulled out my navy dual tip pen because what I'm gonna do is take this embellishment from our back to school embellishments and I am going to use our stencil to write pens on the top of our box here. So this embellishment is gonna wind up being on top of the box. And first I'm taking my fine tipped end of my embellishment, and then I'm gonna use the bolder tipped end, the wider tip, to get my letters done here nice and neat. And I love how there's a darker line here to help you line up your next letter. So for my uppercase letter, I went ahead and just kept it in the stencil, but you could easily just go ahead and trace around the stencil with the fine end of your pen, and then go ahead afterwards, like I am here, getting the inside of my letters 
a bit bolder. Because with, with the little letters, you can't actually use your wider end of your pen in the stencil. And you could leave it. If you don't want to color it in, you don't have to color it in. I just like that it's a little bit bolder this way, a little bit easier to see and read. There we go. And it's nice and neat and easy to make out there. So first things first, I'm gonna grab some foam squares to put on the back of my locker set because I thought it also would be fun to have it with some extra dimension popped out a little bit here. Let me get some more large foam squares here because we need more than just the couple here. This is a large embellishment. Let me move it up a little bit. Okay, here we go. Um, all right, let's make sure we have our ends to where they are gonna be sturdy and reinforced well. Okay, there we go. That's, that is a lot of foam squares. It's a lot more than what I usually use. However, we're not placing it on a typical album page. We are putting it on this box. So I really wanted to make sure it was gonna stick well. So I used a few more and that's okay, I had them. So why not use them if you've got them? And it's also gonna add, because we have this curve as well to this container, I really wanted to make sure that it was gonna stay on and be durable and long lasting as well. Just gathering up all these pieces here. Whoops, I lost one of them. Okay. Here we go, let's get this lined up. You don't want to press it down until you know you have it lined up where you want it to go. I don't want it to be too close to this top piece, so I am was lining it up a little bit more with the bottom. There we go, that's on there. And that looks great, it really stands out. We can lift our lid easily, we don't have to worry about running into that middle locker. And we are going to I'm not going to pop this one up. I'm going to use my regular permanent tape burner with this one. And this is going to go on the top part. Let me... I'm going to grab out my parchment board. If you haven't seen my parchment board before, it's a sturdy piece of cardboard with a piece of parchment paper held on with electrical tape because electrical tape is one of the few things that will stick to parchment. And since we're not baking with it, it really doesn't matter that we're using electrical tape with it, but I wanted to add just a little bit of repositionable tape to that bottom there. And again, I'm using a little bit more tape runner than what I normally would for an average page, but I wanna make sure it sticks. And since I knew I had this soft area in the middle, how do we feel about this? Let's go ahead and layer that on that side with our art thing. Actually, I'm going to, you can use your multi-purpose tool. I'm gonna to scoot this over just a little bit since I'm gonna put the art uh, embellishment on this right side. And again, I'm gonna go around just the edges a little bit with the repositionable, so I'm using both tape runners, but I wanted to make sure that I have all the edges nice and tight, and it, the repositionable tape on the parchment doesn't stick to the parchment paper. The ones that don't come out actually just stay in the tape runner, so it keeps it nice and clean surface. You don't get that extra glue buildup. 
And now let's see if we want to add a couple of our crayon. I think I'm going to add the crayon, a couple of the crayons, I think, to the top because we have crayons in the paper. I don't think we need any more embellishments on here unless we want to add an embellishment to our lockers as if somebody's decorated their locker. Maybe we can do that. Let's open these up. What do we think? Maybe a star or an apple. Here's an apple. We can put on this one. Oops. If I don't put it on sideways, that is. Here we go. Brighten that up a little bit. Maybe a star. Not one of the biggest stars. I think I'm going to go with a small star. That's what we put the gold star on. Nope, I think I'm going to do a couple of silver stars because we have the silver foiling. So let's put a star here and a star here. If I can get it off the backing. Sometimes that's the hardest part, isn't it? So we have our couple of little decorations on our lockers there and I'm going to add how's about red and blue because we already have kind of in design a lot of times it does go in threes I don't know if these are actually gonna yes it should okay so the red one's gonna go up here because that should at least pop on this blue and I think I'm actually gonna go back put this blue one back down because it's not gonna show up with this blue background but this green one will and then I think we're just gonna I'm gonna put a pencil on this side because I don't want the blue one to disappear so we're gonna do this and add that to our top and there we go you have your holder for your pens your erasers your pencils paper clips whatever you want to put in here You've got your lockers on the front. If you want, you can personalize it and write a name on it. I could write Catherine across here and say that's my pen holder, or you could write the person's name up here as well. If you decide to change it out for somebody else later, you can add a different embellishment to the top. Just grab your multi-purpose tool and tuck it under there. And if you'd like to check out more of the products in this back to school product line or in some of our other Creative Memories product lines, check the description box underneath this video. I am a Creative Memories independent advisor and I would love to be your advisor and would be happy to have you shop with me. I can help answer any questions for you. But the, this back to school collection is just adorable. I am gonna be offering an eight by eight album class pretty soon using this collection. It will be a video class and it is perfect for all those back to school pictures you see going across social media everywhere. Check it out on my website, which is also in the description box below the Creative Pages Hub. Once again, I would like to thank Teresa from Our Green Acres and Kay and Trish, the Crafting Cousins, for hosting this Thrift Flip road trip. Until next time.